You acting like a little bitch right now. Minister Society Voice. Wow, Tyson Fury says that Deontay the Braun Bomber Wilder is has become a little bitch. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work. And shout out to that Cash App too. ESPN Plus, sign up below using my link. It's in the description of all my videos. Now, they are doing the rematch February 22nd, Wilder versus Fury. Much anticipated. Tickets are selling well from what I understand. And the fight was officially announced from top rank side pbc side they're not doing a press tour they're not going city to city like they did in the first fight because there's not much time from wilder's last fight and you know with the holidays and stuff so from what i understand they had tyson fury at an espn you know event or something they had him at a, like a college football game or something and he did an interview wilder i think was supposed to be in attendance for that or at least at a separate one in atlanta and he didn't go for whatever reason so now tyson fury is erupted and he's upset that he thinks wilder's ducking out and it's because of him personally tyson fury says and i quote this is the gypsy king tyson fury this is a message to deontay wilder the bronze bomber the big pussy He's not turned up to any of the media events today, blagging he's got the flu because he doesn't want to be in the same room as me. I'll take him to school. His, man his management team are afraid to put Deontay Wilder in the same room as Tyson Fury. Facts. Keep him away. Al Heyman. Keep him away. Shelly Finkel. Keep him away. His trainers. Keep him away. His wife. Deontay. What a little bitch you've become. You can't even come and see me and be face to face with me on camera because you'd be humiliated and took to school. Now, <laughs> I'll be honest, my personal opinion, I don't think it's wise to taunt the bull. Like this is not Sugar Ray Leonard versus Roberto Duran. You know, no disrespect to Duran. We know he's an immense puncher, but Wilder, his power is hitting on a different level. And I actually like this from Wilder. I mean, if he's sick, he's sick. If that's what he, he's they're saying but it's actually good he could just focus be in camp not have to be bothered with it he's the one see tyson fury had a fight in september and then he went off and did this stint in the wwe so he's had more time to actually recover and just rest and chill out so wilder who knows it's the holidays he's about to get in i'm sure a tremendous camp for this particular fight. So who knows what the story is, but I don't think Wilder is afraid. Wilder's confidence, in my opinion, since the first Fury fight should be immense. He's now tackled two pay-per-views. The second pay-per-view did uh, solid numbers, 300,000 roughly around Thanksgiving, you know, the month of Thanksgiving. He knocked out a guy who hurt him badly in the round that the guy hurt him badly in the first fight, and that's Luis Ortiz in the seventh round. He was losing the Ortiz fight, but in boxing, that's why you have 12 rounds to figure it out. So the people who are like, oh, he was losing, that's neither here nor there, because that's why you're given, as I mentioned, 12 rounds to get it together. So I don't think this is smart from Tyson Fury. And Tyson Fury, I think people are go growing tired of the charades, and like the fight's already sold. We wanna see it, people wanna see it. It was the first fight was left on a cliffhanger, ending on a draw. Somebody going to take the L most likely. I can't recall a major fight in history where two people fought and both fights were a draw. You know, I just I can't offhand think of anything like that. So most likely or more than likely, the second fight's not going to end in that manner. And, you know, I think confidence should be high with Wilder more so than Tyson Fury. So Tyson Fury has to do a lot of barking. He has his last fight with Otto Violin, and it wasn't, you know, the best showing. He showed heart, 
which we give him credit for. But, you know, I think heart is overrated in boxing, you know. And let me explain what I'm talking about. The reason I say it's overrating, I think boxing fans and media and writers and stuff, they they put heart in there as if that really does anything. Like, why would you expect anything lesser from a person who's been fighting all their life than to show heart? I mean, it, it's just kind of like more often than not, that's what you're going to come across. People who have been fighting all their life. If you've done anything all your life and made a career out of it, I'm pretty sure it's like, you know, LeBron James is competitive. He's he's a he's a good um, athlete, or he can dunk. You know, to me, that's he's trained his whole life for this moment. He's six foot eight. You know, of course he can dunk when he's been playing ball his whole life. So I think people they pay too much attention to people showing heart. Like, oh, he showed heart. Yeah, but what is, what else? You know, what does that mean? There's a lot of fighters that show heart. That don't mean you got the victory. And yeah, he showed heart, so we give him credit for that. But you know, there's too much ado to do made about people showing heart in boxing. That's what you're supposed to. It's like being surprised that a Navy SEAL can um, deal with pressure better than the average person at Trader Joe's or you know, random citizen. You know, I mean, it's a Navy SEAL. This is a someone who defuses bombs, someone who's in the military, somebody who has proper training in their particular field, of course, they're going to be adequate in that. So I think people focus on that too much about someone getting beat up or, you know, bleeding and fighting through that. I mean, this is kind of what we would expect. So with that out the window, Tyson Fury's performance wasn't great. You know, he showed heart, he battled a cut. So we give him props for that. But he didn't look like a force to be reckoned with. He didn't look like this amazing heavyweight you know, like he did versus Tom Schwarzenegger, who nobody had ever heard of. That's just the the cold, harsh facts and reality with it, you know. And I think the reason he went and he might have went to WWE regardless, but he did it very soon after, even to the point where his cut might not have healed properly. And I think that was to wash away. They're like, man, that was too close for comfort. The Otto Violin fight. Otto Violin gave him too much of a fight. That was supposed to be a showcase fight for Tyson Fury. And it was anything but that. So I think the ESPN and Team Fury, their directive was to write a book and come out with the book and go into the WWE to try to immediately try to change the subject so people forget about what just transpired, how he just had a rough fight because they knew the Wilder fight had already been signed for February and they were going to have to sell that. And off the heels of that performance, it's not necessarily the best performance to lead into the Wilder fight. So back to Fury, all the theatrics, you know, Wilder's afraid. Wilder knocked Fury down and brutally knocked him out for a period of time in the 12th round. So I don't understand why he would be afraid to do um, a face-to-face -face confrontation with them. Like some of the stuff that Fury says sounds stupid as shit, to be honest. You know, a guy who knocked you out unconscious in a fight where he had been getting outboxed in some of the previous rounds, the middle rounds. I don't understand why they would be so fearful to be in the same room when their confidence should be high. Your confidence based on your last performance. Boxing is a what have you done for me lately type of sport. So based on last recent performances, Wilder's riding the wave. And, you know, I can't fathom why he would be afraid to do a face to face confrontation like because I mean, what, what is there to fear? You've already knocked the man unconscious. You know, what is Tyson Fury going to push him at the weigh in and then Wilder swing on him? First of all, most fighters, I think at this, this is not the Ricardo Mayorga, Mike Tyson days where we see these all out brawls. So, I mean, we've seen with the tank Gamboa, but you notice nobody threw punches because no one's going to try to mess up their paychecks and things like that and have an event canceled for fighting when you could get paid to fight. You get what I'm saying? So more than likely, the only thing Tyson Fury would be able to do is words, you know? Because again, who wants to fight Wilder in a street fight, even if it came to that? You know, that to me, that don't really make sense. And I would, who wants to deal with his power with no glove? So I don't understand why Tyson Fury would even say that, but you know, it's good, it's good for the theatrics and, and the showmanship angle. For me, I, I don't really, I'm, I'm over it. That's it, you know. 
I'm over. I want to see the fight regardless of that. So he's he's going to do what he's going to do. He just, especially since he just came from wrestling WWE, he's going to say his piece and put his two cents in. But I want to see the fight irregardless of any of that. You know, all the talk and all the words. And, you know, it just, to me, it's just doing your job to sell the fight. But February 22nd, there could be only one. It's Judgment Day. We have to see who wins. And, you know, all the other pre-fight build and who said what pre-fight you know that goes out the window it's two people fighting for legacy and fighting to show who is you know better from the two since the first fight was left on a stalemate on a draw and this is going to be the tiebreaker so you know i wouldn't personally recommend calling wilder a bitch and these types of things but to each his own I think Tyson Fury has to try to use that. Like, this is my concept. I think, one, he's trying to sell tickets and stuff like that. And two, he's trying to do kind of a Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran. But I think Wilder's kind of built different. I don't think Wilder um, is out of shape. You know, they say Roberto Duran was doing whatever, partying heavily and stuff like that. I don't know that to be the case for Wilder. I think Wilder knows his position, knows that he can change his whole life with these victories and his family's life and stuff like that so i don't think he's going to go the andy ruiz route and not take this training camp seriously not bring in good sparring or the same sparring that he's used and things like that so i think it's just tyson fury's best way of taunting the bull and getting under the skin of wilder because if you look at it in the first fight wilder missed wildly with some of the shots and he was looking kind of too hard for the knockout you know to a degree tank davis kind of did that in spots with gamboa too where he was he he had the crowd and you know all these rappers in attendance and stuff he was kind of pressing for the heavy shots and the shots that would make him look impressive and i think sometimes fighters have to go through that to learn to calm down a little bit and scale it back and don't search for the knockout so wilder already got that out of his system he's already done a second pay-per-view he knocked out dominic brazil in one round so Wilder has, as we close 2019, he has two knockouts of the year in the same year, and he's the same person. You know, so I think his confidence is going to be riding high. I think he's going to be a lot more cerebral and calm leading up to the the fight. And you know, I can't see any reason why, all things considered, with the 12th round and the second knockdown, and Wilder knowing what he possesses, having a better year of fights better competition, better outcomes. You know, who would you rather be this year? Tyson Fury knocking out Tom Schwartz, who no one's ever heard of, in two rounds, or Wilder knocking out Dominic Brazil, the number one rated WBC mandatory, who had at least fought Anthony Joshua, was on a win streak, had knocked out, I think, three of his last four opponents since the Joshua fight, whatever the case is. He's six foot seven, taller than Tom Schwartz, more known about than Tom Schwartz. Dominic Brazil, got better after the the joshua fight he's been in there with way better names than tom schwartz wilder knocked him out done done him you know with really one punch and fury threw everything he could and eventually knocked out tom schwartz but it was like he was wailing on him and tom schwartz wasn't knocked out unconscious like like dominic brazil where he just dropped like a sack of potatoes and then wilder of course needless to say the Otto Violin performance versus Luis Ortiz performance. So to me, this is actually beneficial to Wilder because this sounds like nervous energy. Anybody with the brain can tell that Wilder had better performances against better competition this year. And those things have changed since the first fight in December, which I was I attended, you know. So I think Wilder's actually in a far better place. And I think Tyson Fury is just being Tyson Fury, trying to find his way in, his edge, because it's almost like overcompensating. It's almost like nervous energy. You're trying to do whatever to kind of believe in what you're saying. I, I've seen this kind of with Anthony Joshua, too. Anthony Joshua was like, yeah, meet with me and acting like he wants to fight Wilder. And it's, it's just like he's trying to hype himself up. That's how I take it with Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. They're trying to hype themselves up, but I don't think they believe what they're saying, as at least as it pertains to Wilder. But you know, we're going to find out February 22nd. It's not too much time to wait. Let me know what you guys think. Tyson Fury called Wilder the B word. He keeps doing it, saying he's a pussy and stuff like that. We'll see. 
February 22nd. If you love what I'm doing, smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe to next video's ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.